From your local election headquarters, this election season, mail ballots are expected to be the new normal. As a result, a number of requirements for mail ballots have been removed, despite claims of fraud in the past. We wanted to know how secure the mail process is. Target 12 investigator Walt Buteau went to find out and tells us what he's learned. COVID-19 concerns made it easier to cast mail ballots to reduce crowds at polling places, but critics say that could open the door to fraud. Did you manipulate these Republican ballots? Stephen Fries claimed mail ballot fraud in 2016 after his opponent, House Speaker Nicholas Mattiello, declared victory despite trailing by 147 votes with 714 mail ballots left to count. I know that we're going to be up minimum net of 300. I mean, how would you know how many votes you have? State police investigated but did not find evidence of fraud. In previous years, two witnesses or a notary were required to sign what's known as the oath envelope containing the mail ballot. COVID-19 concerns prompted an executive order from Governor Gina Raimondo that waived those requirements for last month's presidential primary. Once you send us Secretary of State Nelly Gorbea is recommending the same waiver for the September primary and the general election in November. Gorbea tells Target 12 the process is secure even without the witness and notary requirements. She points out signatures are reviewed by local boards of canvassers who compare them to the voter signatures that are on record. Board of Elections personnel inspect the signatures on the oath envelope. And so you have different sets of people, nonpartisans, all political parties involved in what's really a very open and transparent system. Former gubernatorial candidate Ken Block, a frequent critic of the state's election process, tells us he's concerned about whether election workers checking the signatures are trained well enough. He also claims with far more mail ballots, there's a greater opportunity to steal an election. Uh, if a campaign wanted to ensure votes, they will stand over the shoulders of some voters to get the votes that they want. Corbea emphasizes that sort of influence is a felony, and she says there have been no criminal charges involving voter fraud in the state for decades. Yet, what I say to people who believe that, that there's some sort of fraud is, report it. But according to Block, there should also be concern about what he claims is a voter roll bloated with dead people and others who have not lived in the state for years. Because we have really dirty data, uh, we make the possibility for that sort of thing to happen more likely as opposed to making it less likely. Corbea tells us she's willing to examine Block's findings, but she says she is very confident in the voting process. With the Target 12 investigators, Walt Buteau, Eyewitness News.